Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're gonna talk about firing head gaskets. The do's, the don'ts, the when do I need it, stuff like that. This is my personal opinion. If you are getting a built engine from somebody else, I would take their recommendation over some random guy on YouTube. That's all I have to say. But a firing head gasket is when you take the factory firing, I'll turn this around. You guys see this channel groove right here? When you cut that out, and you replace it like so with a steel ring. I believe these are actually stainless steel. If you guys see here. Now, what this allows for is a much better seal on the cylinder head gasket itself. Uh, what you see here is a MLS gasket and what MLS stands for is multi-layer steel. If you guys look right there, you can see all the different layers. They're riveted together throughout the gasket to keep them from shifting. Uh, these came about in 2003 in the Cummins world when the introduction of the common rail happened. And what's really awesome about these head gaskets is when the two surfaces, the cylinder head and the block are perfectly straight. Um, if you ever take two pieces of glass together and you try to rip them apart, they don't come apart. You can slide them apart, but they can't pull apart. Uh, so these really change the game as far as cylinder pressure uh, holding capacity, I guess you would say, um, with these MLS gaskets. It's not uncommon for guys to make a 1,000 horsepower on a stock head gasket with one-at-a-time studs. Uh, what you find is that most guys will experience their first head gasket failure either the first time they start really messing around with nitrous um, the first time they do that three, four shift spike and suck the motor down with some power or when they have compound turbos, which in this case, we're installing it on this customer's truck. I'm not sure what his plans are in the future, but I can tell you that most cylinder head jobs that leave here with a somewhat performance minded individual, we always talk them into firings. Uh, when firings in my recollection, of the diesel industry first came about they were a square cut ring and they were notorious for having issues daily driving them um, now that we have these radius cut grooves here uh, it's probably hard to see but this is actually a, a complete circle um, meaning the edge here used to actually be square cut and now they're round uh, that problem in my opinion has gone away i see no issues when properly installed will you ever have an issue with a firing gasket as far as going bad or needing retorque, stuff like that. It's very simple. You install the head onto the truck with the firing gasket. You torque the studs. You then proceed to start the truck. You run it until the oil temperature on the filter reads about 170 to 180 degrees. It might sit there and run for quite some time, especially if it's cold outside. Uh, it might take 15, 20 minutes for it to warm up. But once it reaches that temperature, you will do the hot retorque, which you guys have seen me do time and time again. That retorque, you will probably get half a turn, three quarters of a turn out of the head studs. Don't panic, just do your hot retorque, let it all cool back off, put the truck together. From there, you are safe to put coolant in. Uh, after that, you'll do one more hot retorque Usually what I tell people is to go drive around half throttle, two thirds throttle. Basically, if, if the truck makes 40 pounds of boost, try not to go over 30. If the truck makes, you know, 100 pounds of boost, mm, I probably wouldn't go over 50. Uh, just use your brain with it. And then you will rip it apart again while it's hot and torque it down. It's not uncommon for them to move anywhere from like a quarter to an eighth. Sometimes they don't even move on a 12 mil stud. And we'll cover that real quick. Your factory head bolts are M12. Most studs, your ARP 2625 studs that you see on XDP and all those other retailers are a 12 mil stud. Then you have your 14 mil stud, which requires your block to get uh, drilled out and retapped for usually it's M14 by 2.0. Um, so I'm only talking to you guys with the on the shelf ARP 2625s, your exotic knockoffs. Um, Gator makes an M12 stud that's I've heard really good things about. Uh, OptiTorque also has a couple lines of studs as well. But that is what I mean. 
and from there you're good to go I, i've never i swear to you the six seven in the mega cab has got the hot retorque done when i lived in utah in december of 2021 and we have not touched those head studs since all that sled pulling last year the drag racing the dyno hits um, everything we've done with the mega cab since i put the motor in it's still on that initial torque never once lost coolant had oil in the coolant coolant in the oil um, so what will happen if you don't install this correctly is the most common problem that i see people have is they will add coolant right away well what happens when you have this stainless ring sitting in between this head gasket is the head actually isn't fully clamped down even once you torque this i think i want to say Meyer and i measured it once you get about six thousandths crush on the initial torque maybe five thousandths crush you're shooting i want to say it's like 10 to 12 thousandths maybe maybe even 15 thousandths um so this ring is still holding the head up a little bit well what can happen is when the truck starts running uh, with oil pressure and coolant pressure you have oil being fed to the rocker arms here and coolant over here well if you start adding coolant too soon what can happen is the coolant and oil can actually mix because the fire ring has tension on it which is why you're not leaking compression but the head hasn't actually crushed the ring enough to seal on the gasket if that makes sense all right and if you guys look right here this is kind of what i'm talking about these rivets see how the gasket's actually moving you can actually move it on the dowels a little bit that's normal on a firing gasket uh, the firing actually holds the head up so the gasket's still loose that's why that first retorque you get three quarters of a turn on a stud you're crushing this after that first hot retorque the head is safely sealed on this gasket and the oil and coolant can't mix so that is uh, one of the most common issues. The only other thing I've seen guys really screw up, and I feel like this, I might've even done this a long time ago, is when you're installing these fire rings and they're all in the head, uh, super glue them into the cylinder head. I've seen a lot of guys set the gasket down, set the rings inside the recesses, which I mean, for all intents and purposes should work with the alignment dowels and everything else. But I have seen guys actually miss the fire ring uh, I'm not sure how you don't notice the head studs having less thread as you get close to this, but hey, I mean, everyone makes mistakes. But those are really the only two common things I've seen. Guys not getting the, the rings incorrectly or not doing the hot retorque before they add the coolant. On this, you have three options for this firing. You have it where it sits all up in the head you have it where it sits all in the block or you do a split firing. Now on the Hazley instructions here. Uh, give me a sec. Let me cut this open for you guys. This is what you're going to give if your cylinder head does not come pre-fire cut or uh, pre-cut for firing. This sheet here that Hazley provides with their gaskets is what you're going to give to your machine shop. On a radius bottom, which is what these fire rings are, you want uh, 18 to 19 in the block, 18 to 19 in the head, if it's half and half. If you're doing it all in the block or all in the head, you're going to want 36 to 38 thousandths in the all in the head or all in the block, depending on which way you do it. Now, most guys I feel like will do all in the head, and it's prime example, this truck here, we are doing a new head on there and then it's easier to just have it put all in the head uh, if you're going to do it in the block i'm not going to say it's impossible to do it in frame but trying to spin the tool would be very hard not only that you have all the shavings to deal with so most guys when they end up firing end up with it usually all in the head once you do a full engine build, whether you get it from us or a variety of other different places, that's when you'll see guys really go to the half and half uh, because you know they're getting a, a built engine, everything's apart, it's very easy to fire ring something. Uh, but in my opinion, again, my opinion, don't come at me, an ARP 2000, an exotic knockoff, a, uh, 
like a I think Opti Torque has like their Patriot line, um, the Gator Black Studs. I'm not sure what they're called. Does not have enough clamp force to properly crush this. Again, if you're buying an engine and the builder of the engine says it's going to work, by all means, maybe they know something I don't. I learn something new all the time. But a 625 stud or an L19 stud is the only way to crush this fire ring properly. Uh, what you're looking for on this is essentially to deform it into the groove so it can't spin. And that was the problem with the square cut grooves. They never really got pinched hard enough and they would kind of rotate. Well, once it started to rotate, you could kind of get that, that uh, compression could work its way around. And that was really the problem. So with these radius cut groove or fire rings, that's why you don't seem to have any of the failures street driving these. Once you get it properly installed with the right head studs, again, 625 ARP, uh, L19 ARP, some companies still sell those, your uh, custom-aged OptiTorx, your custom-aged Gators, uh, those will properly clamp a firing gasket. Now, just to touch on this, if you have a 14 mil stud, whether it's ARP, OptiTorx, I think Gator makes them too, uh, a 2000 material, a black head stud will crush a firing in a 14 mil. And usually on the first hot retorque, it's completely crushed. So just something to think about. Now, as far as horsepower, boost, all that, it's very hard to do this because every truck makes power differently. And really what we're fighting is cylinder pressure. Um, cylinder pressure can only truly be accurately monitored through a cylinder pressure gauge. Most people don't have that, myself included. Um, you'll see it used on like engine dynos. I've seen, uh, I was talking to somebody <coughs> really big in the Duramax world. They'll actually put one in the glow plug hole. Um, I assume power strokes could do that too, but most people don't monitor that. You always hear, I'm running this much boost. Can I, or am I gonna blow my head gasket? And once you wrap your head around boost being a nominal value to a restriction, th then you can kind of grasp that. So for instance, if I make 40 pounds of boost on a stock HE351, I might make 500, maybe 550 horsepower. If I make 40 pounds of boost on a 472 or a 476 Borg Warner turbo, that might be a thousand horsepower. Um, and then now all of a sudden I have a ported head and I have a cam. So that number really deviates. So I don't like to give people a, at 40 pounds of boost, you need to fire in your gasket. Um, I just go off of experience. Single turbo stuff will go a lot further, especially when you get bigger turbos. And why that is, bigger turbos make power later in the power band. They're notorious for having very big horsepower numbers and relatively low torque. Well, that is a direct relationship to the how the cylinder pressure is affecting the engine at a given RPM. One of the biggest head gasket poppers in the world, in my opinion, is like a stock HE351 or a HE351 VE or a H300 VE with like a 475, 480 on it. Uh, Cause that setup just comes on super quick. It makes a lot of torque. And with that torque, you have a lot of cylinder pressure. Um, so that's why on, for instance, that 2003 project truck, it's only making a thousand horsepower turned all the way up. It's probably only making 700, 800 horsepower on most of the tunes that he's going to be driving it on but that setup's going to make you know 1600 foot pounds at 2000 2200 rpm versus a single turbo 472 or 76 that makes a thousand horsepower and it makes 1400 foot pounds at 3000 rpm if you guys can kind of use a little bit of interpretive math or i don't want to say common sense because i don't want to offend anybody but like just think about the way stuff comes up that's why guys that have these stock chargers with ADA turbos, they feel like their truck's so fast because it hits so hard down low versus you get into like, even my 07 quad cab with the S400 GT55, that truck doesn't feel very good down low. It doesn't make a lot of power, but at 3000 RPM, that thing is just rocket ship. Uh, so that kind of, again, single turbo stuff, stock head gasket with 625s, ARP 2000s, you know, that era. 
I've seen guys do a thousand eleven hundred horsepower in my opinion as soon as a customer tells me how they're gonna drive it and I, I really do this off of I don't want to say maturity level but if I know a guy is towing with it or he's using it to haul for money they're generally not as hard on stuff as for instance this customer he's like this is a toy so I know that every time this truck gets driven it's not to get them to work it's not a necessity it's not gonna have you know a camper behind it with his wife and kids and he's gonna be beating it like it is a toy so knowing how a truck's going to be used will affect my decision that is why this truck is getting a firing head gasket it's a toy uh, right now it's got a 67 millimeter he351 so in all regards it could hold on a stock gasket just fine but knowing how he wants to use it knowing it's going to be modified later on we're going to do the firing just like that 03 truck i don't know this gentleman really well enough to get the full picture but you come into a shop and you want a thousand horsepower and you basically tell us to do whatever we want i want to make sure he's not going to have a head gasket failure down the road so we fire ringed it um so again i know that's kind of a really long non-answer but if you're going to do compounds fire ring the truck absolutely five nine six seven firing the truck if you're going to be the guy that sprays a lot of nitrous uses it for competition i would still firing it even single turbo in my opinion um if you're a guy that's only chasing five six hundred horsepower seven hundred horsepower and it's more of a daily driver stuff like that i don't think you need to um if we are replacing your cylinder head and you have ideas of modifying it later on down the road there's no drawback to firing in a, a head gasket even if you're not at that power level yet so hope uh, excuse me hopefully that kind of makes sense to you guys on it i know i didn't give real horsepower numbers because quite frankly i don't want to mislead people use your best judgment if it's a toy and you want a lot of power just firing it um, in my opinion right around 1200 horsepower is where i talk people into half in the head, half in the block. Um, and what happens is you got this really awesome groove represented by my hand. The ring sits in the groove. Obviously this is exaggerated. Well, the block is flat. So what can happen is the ring can kind of push its way out. And it's hard to see. I don't know if you guys will actually see it on camera, but these rings actually have a, a seam. Well, if that seam catches just right and the block's flat and it's just sitting in this groove, it can work its way out versus it's got a groove now in the block, a groove in the head, it's much harder to push the ring out. So right around, again, 1200 horsepower is when I talk people into half in the head, half in the block. Um, my only but is if you have a 14 mil head stud, John Schrado, prime example, 1800 horsepower, all in the block, uh, 14 mil stud. So again, not to try and contradict myself, but there's always gonna be those what ifs uh, I would say a majority of you guys aren't messing around with 14 mil studs, which is fine. Uh, again, our my mega cab engine, that 6.7 that's in there, the 6.4 we built for the quad cab, those are all 625, 12 mil head studs. They hold up just fine when used correctly. Uh, so yeah, I we covered the MLS gasket, when we start using the fire ring, what the purpose of the fire ring is. Let me just kind of show you guys here. We'll pan over. This is our, this is a Freedom Performance Street Series head. If you guys notice, this is a 5.9 truck as apparent by the missing steam port holes there. Uh, so this engine being a 5.9 still has the upgraded valves, but they aren't bigger. Uh, on a 5.9, you can't run a very big valve compared to a 6.7 uh, Freedom Racing Engines actually upsizes this valve. Uh, so this, again, all in the head as you guys can see here. Uh, and what I do to install these is I will drop four dabs of super glue. One, two, three, four. Uh, I'll have the head laying flat, valve springs down. I'll set the rings in, I'll walk away for about 10 minutes and then I will install it. That is how I get the rings to stay inside of the cylinder head while I'm installing it. I've never had one really fall out using that method as long as you give the super glue enough time to set up. But yeah, this is probably the most common cylinder head that we sell are these uh, fleece cylinder heads, Freedom Racing Engine cylinder heads, as you could tell. 
we uh, stack them deep and I just, for us, it comes down to availability. Freedom can get us a cylinder head in usually two days. They're very easy to do with the cores, especially if I'm like, hey, I'm gonna order this a little early. My core might not be back within the time. They make a note of it, no problems, no questions asked. Uh, to add on to that, in my opinion, cylinder heads, you have Freedom Racing Engines or Fleece, depending on how you wanna say it, uh, DNJ Precision Machine, uh, you have Industrial Injection, um, and then I gotta give a shout out to PDD. Those are really, when I think of selling an aftermarket cylinder head, those are the four companies that I usually think of. Mountain High, if they're still around, also did fantastic work. Um, and then there's a lot of smaller shops that do one-off jobs. Uh, for instance, New Performance Auto, Steve up there, he will sell you a ported head, but a lot of our customers need the cylinder heads quick. And that's where we run into a little bit of a problem is getting the head ready to go. And that's why Freedom is such a go-to for us because they have these here so quick. And I, we were talking, David and I, actually about thinking about stocking some of these now because we, we seem to go through them quite often. But whether you decide to go fleece, industrial injection, uh, DNJ, um, PDD, I, I feel like as long as you install the part correctly, you know, it's, it's very hard to screw these up, especially the, the shelf intact stuff. Well, I hope this video cleared a little bit of it up for you guys. Um, I'm sorry if it confused you anymore. You guys can drop your questions down here uh, if you have any more. But this kind of gives you the gist of your firing head gaskets. For you 12 valve and VP44 guys, it is very similar. Your guys' head gasket just looks a little bit different. Um, I, I knew the term for it. Uh, I, for some reason, I think of O-ring impregnated gasket, but that might, I don't, that doesn't even sound right. But your guys' gaskets are different because they are actually not an MLS. They are one sheet of like a composite and that actually has a fire ring built into it. And all your coolant passages have that little O-ring printed on it. Um, but again, I would say 12 valve guys, you are the most notorious for head gasket problems early on. Um, VP guys probably are up there too. I feel like firing those is a much better idea. O-rings aren't bad, but I do feel like O-rings, I feel like they're oversold, over-promised versus an actual firing gasket providing a better seal. Again, I'm not saying you gotta rip your O-ring head off or anything like that, but I do think, I just feel like people over-promise and under-deliver on an O-ring gasket you're probably better off fire ringed. Um, and 12 valve guys, whether it's the way the head is designed, the different length studs, it seems like you guys have a lot of head gasket failure. I was no uh, different when I owned a 12 valve, but again, earlier on, I feel like you guys need to. I think a lot of it boils down to the cylinder pressure and being able to get it out of the cylinder head fast enough where the 12 valve guys kind of have that bog up. But hopefully we answered all of your guys' questions on firing gaskets, on when to use them, when not to use them, what studs to use them with, what studs to not use them with, uh, and kind of a rough power range of, of it. And for those of you guys that don't know what firings are and we're scared to ask, hopefully this kind of shows you again, this is a stock gasket here. This is your stock 6-7 gasket here. And then over here, oh gosh, well, I was right at it. Over here is your cut out firing gasket. And here is your fire ring. You guys can kind of see that radius groove now a little bit better up close and personal. And the last thing I'll tell you, the fire rings that are most commonly sold are off of the Hazley kit. They are 4.5 five zero in diameter and 0 0.105 thick if you guys lost your instruction sheet i want to share this with the internet pause read whatever you need screenshot those are the instructions for your five nine and six seven mls head gaskets if you guys look right there it says mls uh, this gives you both the um Let's see here. Oh, so here is the total grooves 
And then here is for half in the head, half in the block. And look at that, Hazley even has a uh, boost pressure. So there you go, in medium boost, 80 or under. So Hazley does it on boost. I think they're just trying to put out a relative number for you guys. Uh, again, you know, I've seen guys do way more boost pressure than that on it, but this is what they say. And I'll tell you this, Patty and Van have been in this game since I was probably cutting blades of grass with my you know what. So hopefully you guys like this video. Drop a comment if you guys have any more tech series videos you'd like to see covered. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you subscribe. We really need to get that subscriber count up. And as always, guys, I will catch y'all on the next one.